<laughs> God calling. Where? Where? Who? What? You. <laughs> That's right, he's calling you. You know, I think of that beautiful song. Probably the first time I heard it, it was... Oh, gosh, I think it was the dead of winter. And I think I was in some place with snow country. And I, my mind seems to be provoked to remember it being in Oregon, which is possible. You know, I've lived in a lot of different places where there's snow. <laughs> but it seems like it was a, a night, and suddenly on the radio I heard this this beautiful song coming on and a voice similar to John Denver and it was telling a ballad and a story that went along until the moment when suddenly you heard Adam Adam where are you and that haunted me it blessed me when I say haunted, I mean it was so echoing in its urgency, in its desire for fellowship, for its communicative ability to touch my heart, to reach out and grab me in a way that, oh, he was my father. And it just so happened that Don Francisco got a chance to record it. <laughs> but seriously, the power of it in its original version, and the words and the emotion just, oh, I just fell into literally my father's arms. I mean, it just sometimes you just collapse into peace, into being loved on as opposed to loving him. And I pray for you today that when you think of God calling in your devotions, that it's kind of a goofy book, you know, I mean, it's different. It reads different. But God meets you where you are. And I hope he doesn't have to call out to you like he did to Adam in anguish of heart for the sadness and the sorrow of what you've done that you should be not coming to him today. But rather you would go quickly to, to find mercy and forgiveness, grace and peace and love to find the joy that there really is in knowing God today. Turn your eyes to behold me. Look away from the sordid surroundings, from the lack of beauty, from the imperfections in yourself and the imperfections in those around you. Then you will have the faith. Then you will have the eyes to see. You will have a vision that you will be able to do all you could and desire to do in me all that you want to accomplish for me and with me, you will be able to do because you see as I see. In your unrest, behold my calm, my rest. In your impatience, my unfailing patience. In your lack and limitation, my perfection. Looking at me, you will grow like me until men say to you too, that you have been with Jesus. Do they say that about you today? Have you revealed Jesus from inside you to someone else by just being you? Is it you that no longer lives or Jesus that lives in you? As you grow like me, you will be enabled to do the things I do and greater works than these shall you do because I go unto my Father. Don't look at all those miracle workers as though they are me. For the people that seek after miracles just want someone who can do miracles, and anyone can do a miracle. But rather be like me, who had compassion and mercy, who saw the individual need, and not the many thousands that were fed and walked away. But rather, look at me when I wept over Jerusalem. Look at me when I forgave from the cross, saying, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Look at me and look to me, and you shall be saved from not only your sins, but from the failures of what you want to do, and you really would like to do for me. 
from that place of abiding with me, limited by none of humanity's limitations, I can imbue you with the all-conquering, all-miracling power of your divine brother and ally, the Holy Spirit. I can come into you by way of the Spirit of God and be with you always, even unto the end of the age. For even as I am one with my Father, I am one with my Spirit. So don't get caught up in the ways of the miraculous or the ways of the world. Don't get caught up in the things of the Spirit that are not of me, but rather find me in the midst of all of these. And then you will find it is the things of the Spirit that I am.